Hello, Jenny Hall here for Trinity Stamps. Today I'm going to give some tips on designing a project with two colors. My colors are blue and gold. I will be using the Best Place to Be stamps and dies from the newest Trinity release. And I'm going to use a Slimline Foundations Rectangle Stencil. This is a really cool stencil that has etch marks around the edge so that I can tell exactly where to place this on a panel or on a card base. I'm going to place this with some purple tape, but you could sure use some pixie spray if you like. Now I'm going to use some Trinity Blending Bruddy brushes and some Atelier A inks from Ink on 3, and Ink on 3 products are available in the Trinity store. Now I'm going to use my brushes and the ink to get a very, very light ink blended look. Sometimes ink blending with a heavy hand is a lot easier than going with the light hand. And believe me, I try really hard not to get those little streak marks. So the best thing that I can suggest is to first ink your brush and then wipe it off a couple of times and work with a really light coat of ink. Now I'm going to use some images that I stamped and die cut off camera to save some time because I really want to concentrate on the color and on the design tips. So check out how detailed this die cut is from Trinity Stamps. It is amazing all of the detail that is cut out in this die. Now one thing that allows this to le really let the background show behind it is all of the little tiny pieces in between the leaves are already die cut out. And so it looks more natural and it looks more pleasing to the eye. And this is a fantastic example of using a product that you can use on a colored background. So I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and I have stamped my images onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock and then I heat set that with some clear embossing powder. I've gotten out like three or four different blues from my marker set and I'm going to use the blues together to get a really nice blended look. So you could see that first I added that darker blue into the recess or outside areas. I used a lighter blue to blend that out to the middle. And then I used the empty blender, the blender pen that has no color, but it has the solution. And that is going to give me that blended look. I didn't use green because I'm only working with two colors here, but one tip on using a color for leaves is to use a blue green and a blue green is still in the blue family but when you put it up next to all those other beautiful blues it's not going to look so blue anymore it's going to look more green but it's still blue and it still sticks to the two color design theory now on these beautiful little bees i'm going to do the same type of thing but I've started out with yellow. I added a little bit of an orangey red and that's going to give me a darker yellow because yellow was the prominent color there. Now I'm going to color these little cute elves to where they complement each other. So the, let the, not an elf, a gnome. <laughs> the gnome on the left is going to have blue clothes and a blue hat and yellow shoes and then the one on the right hand side is going to have yellow everything except for blue shoes so instead of having to bring in another color which would be brown then we're sticking with the blue and yellow and we're going to just make these little guys look like they totally match together so I'm using the same coloring method as I did on the other um, items, and that is to put the darker color around the outside of the image, bring it in with a lighter, and then you know use that, that clear blender pen to kind of blend it all out together. On the yellow hat for the little girl, because I want it to be striped, then the first thing I did was place my lightest color for the air for the whole hat area and covered the whole thing with that and because this image is embossed then all those embossed lines are going to help 
the ink stay in one particular place. I used a more of an orangey yellow to make the stripes, but it's still yellow. So we're using many different tones of yellow and many different tones of blue to achieve that overall look of just having two colors. It's going to bring the image more to life and it's going to stick with a particular color scheme, which makes my brain happy. It makes it easy sometimes if I'm in a rut and I'm like, I just don't even know what colors. What colors should I use? I'm stuck on the colors. Well, I can get myself unstuck from being stuck on what colors to use by just choosing two colors that complement each other really nicely. For the hair, I'm choosing to color with some grays. And the reason I did that is because gray is more of a neutral between these two colors. It looks kind of uh, silverish and it's going to just kind of accent, but it's not gonna take away. The same thing for the skin tones. I did get like a yellowish brown color to do for the skin tones. So it still kind of brings in a little bit of that yellowness and kind of leans more towards the neutral. So I'm, I'm getting all of the little fingers and all the little face features that I can find. I always seem to forget something though, whenever I'm coloring. <laughs> Anyways, here are those beautiful grays and the Zig marker set has a lot of grays to choose from. Right now I'm going with kind of a really light gray because I want to bring that from the shadowed area up and then I'll grab one color darker and just keep it down into the shadowed area. And because the little guy has braided beard, like the girl has braided beard, then I'm coloring both exactly the same way. Now, when it comes to the top part of the beard, I'm just laying that darker gray down into the areas that are already marked off by the stamp as having a contour or a little bit more texture. And then I'm going back to that lighter gray that I used to start with and then using that empty white, that empty clear colorless blender. And that is enough to be able to just get a little bit of a contoured look to his beard. I can't leave it uncolored because if I wanted it to be white, then it's just going to look like an uncolored area. But by using those grays, then it makes it look like it's come to life just enough to not be uncolored it still looks sort of white so this is the cutest gnome set i love how they are sitting next to each other and he's holding her braid and their hats are kind of intertwined together it is so sweet but my favorite part has got to be this little branch with some blossoms I absolutely adore these flowers and I am going to adhere as many of these as possible. <laughs> I stamped off three of them knowing that I wanted the whole top portion of the card to be focused on the branches and I've got them all ready to go. I'm sending two of them directly down to the card base and then the third one at the topmost is popped up. And I also did three bees because these bees are so sweet. One bird's enough because it's a big bird. So I'm going to adhere him down to the bottom so it kind of brings the eye up with some of that blue color. Now I made sure to have some of it sticking off of the card base and I'm just gonna trim that away with my scissors. The sentiment is a little bit of a of just kind of it got lost. I wanted to use a blue cardstock and have it be a blue cardstock with a white sentiment, but the the cardstock I grabbed was just way too light. I can see the words with my eye in person, but it doesn't come off very well on the video, so I apologize for that. And I tried to add some white gel pen to kind of make the letters stand out a little bit 
but my gel pen ran out. <laughs> so it was kind of like, okay, I'm just going to go with the flow. Just like the little stamping mistake on the blue gnome's hat. I pushed too hard on the stamp and a little area came off that's not supposed to be there. That was me pushing too hard on the ink pad and then pushing too hard on the stamp set. And I, I guess after pushing off too hard on all of the different components, I should feel like I've relieved some stress. <laughs> but this card is adorable. It has two colors that are just complimenting each other so nicely and I hope that you've enjoyed the process. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on designing with two colors and just drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.